All right, with the prevalence of red dot sights on duty handguns, self-defense handguns, and even target handguns, I think it would be appropriate for me to do a video showing why you might want to consider a 15 yard zero instead of the 10 yard zero I see most people on the range using with their red dots. And I understand a 10 yard zero, that's kind of right there at the, at the long end of the standard handgun engagement. But there are some things that you might want to consider related to height over bore, mechanical offset, and how that really starts to kind of affect your point of impact, point of aim shift as you get to those further reaches, potential engagement distances, even if you're just engaging a paper target on the range for fun, at 25, 35, 50 yards, where close range, the difference between your 10 yard zero and a 15 yard zero, really there's no practical difference. But at those longer distances, you might want to be able to deploy that handgun. It really does make a difference. So we're going to get a 10 yard zero here on the range. And we're going to shoot it at five yards, 15 yards, and then maybe even go out to 50 yards and really see what happens to that 10 yard zero. And they're going to reset and do it at 15 yards and see, you know, is the point I'm making that you might want the 15 yard zero a valid point. Let's make it happen. So I think it's important to point out, unlike with a rifle where you're concerned about repeatable cheek wells and length of pull and all that for these super long range or relative to the handgun engagement distance or zero distance, you really want these things to be super consistent and, and you want consistency in your handgun too, but you're not gonna be quite as concerned about length of pull and there's no obviously no cheek weld and, and really how you're gripping the gun as long as you're getting a repeatable straight rearward smooth trigger press really how you're gripping the gun and standing has little to nothing to do with the zero and the red dot what we do want to do is ensure that we take as much of the human element out as is reasonable and possible and ensure that that dot centered in that window so that you eliminate whatever parallax you may be able to eliminate so what I've got here is a hasty zero setup. I've got an upside down garbage can uh, with a rifle bag on top of it so that I can bench rest the handgun. And this is at 10 yards from the target. We'll work on the zero for both of these weapons. Make sure that we get them zeroed correctly and, and get a really tight group, especially resting at 10 yards. And then once we do that, then we'll start testing distances and see where those shots place. Point of impact versus point of aim. Uh, at that zero distance and we'll shoot back at 15 yards and into five like I said earlier. It is important that if wherever you choose to zero your red dot that you know where it's going to hit really probably 35 yards and in at you know five to ten yard increments especially closer range getting to that five yard you know understanding and, and unless you're point blank range where it should just be mechanical offset you know height over bore you're, you're going to find that anything a 15 yard in zero is probably going to place close to the point of impact point of aim inside 15 yards you know so that it, it, in, in the real world it's not going to matter now if you're shooting bullseye at 50 yards that's probably going to matter but anything on the inside of that distance your zero at 15 yards or 10 yards really you're not going to see a difference in those various distances until you step out to that 35 yard 45 yard heaven forbid 50 yard uh, and then it's really going to the disparity between the 10 yard and 15 yard zero is really made manifest and so let's get the zero done. Once again, make sure you know where your gun hits, or your point of impact, point of aim is, shift is at various distances that you feel like you might need to use your firearm. Let's put some rounds in range. So at 10 yards, you can see uh, we've got two rounds here, one round here. I probably should have shot five, but I'm trying to be conservative with my ammo expenditure because there's going to be a lot of rounds fired today. Uh, maybe I dropped that a little bit or it sank in there, but you know, this is really where I, our, our zero is. So we're a little high, a little to the right. So we'll dial that in. I'm not going to bore you to death watching that happen, but I'll dial that in right here to the center and then we'll start testing it across distances. 
All right, got a 10 yard zero. All we need to do now is shoot at five and 15 and kind of compare that to the inevitable 15 yard zero and see how all that plays out. All right, as you might imagine, if you understand a little bit about mechanical offset and height over bore and, and all these things, inside the distance of our zero, we're a little low. It's still on that upward arc to meet where point of impact and point of aim have been set at 10 yards. So at five yards, we're what, a half an inch low in the center of that. As I said earlier, practically irrelevant. You know, this, this doesn't matter in the real world. If you imagine this on a target, a human target, a bad guy, whatever the case may be, uh, that's not gonna matter. If this is a good shot, that's probably also a good shot. We got our 10 yard group, point of impact, point of aim, dead on, a little low at five yards. Let's check it at 15 and see what it looks like. All right, once again, here we are seeing the zero at 15 yards. Ignore this little guy. I rushed this shot. I felt it happen as the gun was sitting into that bag. But here's the two rounds stacked. And just like we expected to be a little low on the inside of our zero distance, now that we're on the outside, we expect it to be a little high. And here we are, 15 yards. We're about an inch and a half high. Still shooting a tight group. You know, and our, their center line is kind of proving itself out, which is good too. We know that our zero, as we go in and out, we really want to just see the group kind of move on this vertical plane. And it, we've tested that out. Now, think about, and I can shift this a little bit. Think about, you know, from five yards or from 10 yards, our zero, to five yards, we were a half inch low. From 10 yards to 15 yards, we're you know, at least an inch, if not an inch and a quarter, inch and a half high. So what happens at 25 yards or 35 yards? And as that angle of deviation gets greater, this is where that 10 yard zero is really gonna start burning us. So what we'll do is we'll run this over there to the rifle range. Let's put it at a really far distance, maybe even 50 yards and see where our 10 yard zero is at 50 yards. All right, back from the 50 yard test. This is where I'm aiming. One, two, three. I wish I had more time over there. <laughs> it looked like the folks that are over there are about to get in a good old fashioned redneck fist fight. So I shot my three rounds and came back to this range. But I expected to be high, right? We expected to be higher, but now all of a sudden I see my shift to the left. Something that could be hidden in some of these closer distances. My zero tends to be, or seems to be maybe potentially a little off. And I need to know that. I need to know that if I'm gonna stick with this zero, this 10 yard zero, that at 50 yards, I'm, you know, my, my, I really wanna trust these two. I'm not sure what happened here. It shouldn't be level, so that's probably trigger pull or whatever. But I'm, what, one, two, three, three to four inches high and one, two, three, three to four inches left. So if I'm gonna keep this zero, I need to know that. Or potentially, maybe I wanna adjust a little bit to you know, a few clicks right, where it'll make an impact at 50 yards, but I probably won't even notice at 10, certainly won't notice it at five. So let's reset the whole thing. I got a fresh target over here, and let's do it all over again, a 15 yard zero instead of a 10 yard zero and see what these distances look like with that zero. I started getting overly picky up here because I know that I'm gonna keep this zero, uh, shoot up the target, move down here. Here's my 15 yard zero. We'll shoot at five and 10, and then down here in the bottom right at 50, compare it to the target.
this is supposed to say 10 yards. And just like before, side of our zero distance, we're a little low. Seems to be centered on that line. You kind of take the average because we're inside of where point of impact and point of aim intersect at 15 yards. So we'll run it at five and then we'll run it at 50. All right, once again, we're further inside. We're point of impact, point of aim, meet our zero. So it's 15 yard zero, power five yards. And it looks to be that we're, you know, about a full inch low, um, but still centered. Once again, in the real world, this deviation from point of impact, point of aim is practically irrelevant. So th there's no real world circumstance where this shift even if it might be greater than the shift that we saw on our 10 yard zero see this is about half as much of a shift because we're you know closer to our point of impact point of aim closer to our zero um, but if this pays us better dividends across distance you know namely when we get out to the 50 yards in my opinion, it'll be well worth another half inch at 55 yards or 10 yards. All right, I'm back from the 50 yard range with a 15 yard zero. There's my, my group here at 50 yards. We can take care of that. To the group here with the 10 yard zero and further away and so if we, if we look at these back to back here's our 10 yard zero point of impact point of aim that's where they meet at five yards we're about a half inch low at 15 yards we're you know an inch inch and a half high maybe two inches and at 50 yards we're one, two, three, three and a half to four left, and one, two, three, three and a half to four high. And then with our 15 yard zero, point of impact, point of aim, dead on, we're an inch low at five yards. We're not quite an inch low, about a half an inch low at 10 yards. And then at 50 yards, Kind of got one flyer over here, but the bulk of the group is about two inches left and one, two, three inches to four inches low. So everything is tighter here, especially as we go out. So you can imagine, you know, coming into 35 yards, this would kind of suck into here, and at 35 yards, this would suck into here. So we'd still be off of this diamond where we'd be in the diamond here. I would assume at 35 yards with the 15 yards so you do what you want to do but I highly suggest and recommend a 15 yard zero on a red hat and handgun and don't just assume where you're gonna be based on videos like this but go out and test and know for sure just like with the rifle know for sure where your point of impact point of aim shift is going to be for your zero on your handgun and your hand and obviously make sure that if you're going to zero your firearm any kind of firearm that you're applying good techniques and fundamentals you know, side picture side alignment which really is irrelevant with the red dot but slow steady screws on the trigger make sure that if you're using a dot and that's what you're zeroing that you're doing it with a consistent dot placement you know in the center of the window uh, that's that's a good thing good habit to have not just when you're zeroing but with it all the time when you're shooting the parallax isn't practically all that important when you're actually shooting in the real world but once again remember when you're zeroing you're trying to calibrate the machine and you want to remove any human error if possible so all right appreciate it hope this helps